blamed on immigrants, on refugees, on asylum seekers, and on people of color. So for example, people blame the housing crisis on immigrants. But then they sit in their homes and you know, a delivery comes and a delivery driver with darker skin or with a turban or with a hijab is the one who brings them their Uber Eats meal or who brings them their Amazon delivery from a factory run by people of color, right? People blame immigrants for the overwhelming, uh, you know, of Ontario's healthcare system, for the lack of timely care, for poor health outcomes for people. And yet it is immigrants, it's Haitian women, it's Filipino women, now and during the height of COVID-19, who have served as personal support workers, nurses, cleaners, doing the most dangerous and thankless work. I could go on about this because the labor of immigrants and racialized people sustains this country, and we know that. But the racism we're facing today is not new, and it shouldn't surprise us. Some of what I'm talking about can be classified, you know, as bigotry, as individual prejudice. You guys know about the hurtful comments, the hateful things that people say, the individualized stuff. But if we really want to combat racism, we have to fight it on a systemic and on an institutional level. And that means, yes, and that means fighting the powers that are allowed to do the most harm to people of color, that are allowed to kill us, that are allowed to detain us and take away our freedom, the institutions that are allowed to separate us from our families. So that means that when black and indigenous people organize against police brutality, all of us have to be there to stand with them, right? This means that when we hear about people who are organizing to free people who are in our jails and prisons from some of the most inhumane conditions of this country, we have to stand with and organize with them also. It definitely means that when we see Palestinian and Arab people organizing in the streets for Palestinian solidarity and against genocide, we have to stand with them. And it also means that when the Canada Border Services Agency comes for people like our brother Charles Mwangi here and tries to deport them to death, we have to organize and stand with them. And we saw what happened when we organized for Charles, didn't we? He is still here. You're right here and thank God for it. And still leading the fight for other people even as you struggle yourself. So, we have to be willing to take risks, unity, and risk-taking and solidarity for one another is the way that we are going to defeat racism and xenophobia. Racism is the thing that allows so much of our suffering to be ignored, to be minimized, and to be excused. And when we allow it to happen to one group, our collective movement gets weakened. So we have to be together. It wasn't until my final year of high school, I just want to say this in closing, okay? Sometimes it's hard to know for racism. How do we make progress? How do we know that something is changing? When we have immigrant demands, we want status. We want regularization. You've heard it. We want health care. We want benefits for people. But how do we measure how we're doing when it comes to racism? When I was in my last year of high school, I learned about the Trail of Tears. That is the ethnic cleansing of indigenous peoples in what is now southwestern United States of America. I didn't learn about that until my final year of high school, and it wasn't until university that I first heard a professor use the words colonialism and genocide in relation to indi indige indigenous people in this country. But what do we see today? Today I see elementary students 
who are learning about residential schools, who are wearing t-shirts that say all children's lives matter, and I think that is remarkable. I talk to, I talk to students, I talk to students in elementary and high school who have been out here marching for black people who have been killed by the police, who are saying that we need to invest in care instead of cops for a safer future. And although the fight against the police is still an uphill struggle, it is remarkable in the last decade to see how many more people are educating themselves to stand up for black lives and against policing. It's, in, it's remarkable. And so, we have to take strength from these developments and we have to continue to move forward together. So as we prepare to go onto these streets now and to march, I want to ask you, when indigenous lives are under attack, what do we do? When black lives are under attack... <laughs>
of democracy, meaning that the power is back to the people. And when we come here, we challenge all threats to democracy, and racism is a threat to the what? To democracy. We want to challenge racism as a threat to democracy, xenophobia as a threat to democracy, homophobia as a threat to democracy, discrimination as a threat to democracy. As we remember that today is an international day of democracy, we also stand with the countries where democracy has been raped. For example, Uganda, for example, Ukraine, for example, uh, Palestinian, and we call for sovereignty of the people. And that is why we say, people power! Young and Blur, we're going to hear some amazing speeches and then wrap for the day. But before we go, in three days, there's going to be what River Run. You ever know about this? What is River Run meeting? Rage Park. What time? So September 18th, the residents of Grassy Narrows will be here. And uh, making sure that the, their fight for to uh, fight against mercury poisoning is loud and strong. So we're going to film a solidarity message for Grassy Narrows. We're going to say solidarity with Grassy Narrows. The River Run is when? Wednesday. September 18th. What time? Oh. 12 p.m. Where? Where's Park? That's right. So we're all going to say solidarity with Grassy Narrows. Everyone ready? Yeah? Hold your placards up. Solidarity with Grassy Narrows. Uh, our next speaker is Bikram, a member of the Norwegian Support Network and a former Indian president who can do for the American Welcome Bikram. Can, can, can you say hey to Bikram? And you make a nice place for Bikram. What do we want? Uh, my name is Bikram. Thank you for inviting us to join today. Uh, we are here as a member of Nojiba Sport Network organization for uh, international students and immigrants workers that organize to directly confront the employers, colleges, landlords and government that exploit us. I came to Canada in 2019 as an international student. I have been working as a mechanic while on a postgraduate work permit also called TGWP. But now my work permit is expiring and I stand to lose my status or face deportation. There are over more than 130,000 other PGWP holders across Canada, like me, and some of them are here with me today. Like so many migrant workers in Canada, international students were sold the Canadian dream. We were told this is a country that embarrasses, difference, and offers people dignity and rights. For every year, federal government officially used the slogan, study, explore, and stay. For the international student program, we were promised a pathway to permanent residency, pure and simple. Without that promise for PR, we would never have left behind our family sold, our land and tolerate abuse and exploitation. So we came here with a Canadian dream in our mind. But when we arrived, reality was the completely opposite. Our government give colleges unchecked power to exploit us by charging five times the domestic tuition fees. They give employers nearly free reign to pay us below minimum wage, threaten us with deportation and abuse us. They allow, they allow landlords to mistreat and illegally evict us. And then 
At the peak of COVID, we worked to hold up the economy during a labor shortage when working conditions were unsafe. We work in trucking, warehouse, construction, food service, other... Intentional and systemic. made of migrants internal they cost. Shame. Instead of addressing housing and employment crises, xenophobia and racism become a convenient tool for the government to avoid responsibility and further justify discrimination. Shame. An old Chinese poem reads, Si Hai Si Lu Ren, it means everyone within the four seas is my brethren. No one is a standalone passerby. Now I know someone, I am someone, through the CCNCTO community and all of you here. I came to understand that I am alone and that my experience are valid because many of us share it. I came to understand that this society pushes migrants to the margins while demanding our compliance and our labor. For the Tong government, it's up to us to speak up and abolish the second class citizenship in Canada that justify anti-Asian and anti-immigrant sentiments and policies. While Parliament promised to give permanent resident status and regularization of all undocumented people, many of us who are barred from citizenship and voting reinforces the status quo. 尽管议会许诺赋予无证人群有有居民权，我们中没有投票权、没有公民权的现实，导致我们无法挑战移民被边缘化的现状。Parliament is returning tomorrow. Join us in speaking up and demanding Prime Minister Trudeau to implement permanent resident status and regularization of all undocumented people. citizenship has to stop okay let us not forget that we yes you 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 and me we have power too we have power too social organizing now let me know what do we want adam was born and raised in the west bank a few later and organized with the palestinian youth movement toronto to speak to us today about Palestine raises in and small before. Welcome on. Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon all of you. Today we're here to raise our demands against the Canadian state. We're here to condemn the blaming of immigrants and migrants for this country's problems. We know that they brought us here, but before they gave us a chance to come here, they colonized our land. They oppressed our people back home. We are witnessing a shift, a political shift in, around the world. And the leading factor of it is Palestine, what's happening in Gaza. The people of Gaza have exposed Western hypocrisy and Western double standards that's been used to fund Israel and let Israel act with absolute impunity by killing 2,100 Palestinians. We will not stay silent when the Canadian government uses our money to fund the genocide around the world and in the global south to fund the killing of Palestinians and other minorities around the world. We demand them to use that money towards affordable housing. To use that money to better the conditions of migrants and immigration here in this country. We demand them to stop the scapegoating of immigrants because we are not the problem. The problem is the elite class that controls profits, profits and benefits from these wars around the world. The past 11 months, the international community has stayed silent in the face of the genocide being committed. Shame! Shame! The biggest march for Palestine Young and Danda Square, I want to see you all there. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Adam. I will now introduce Salom. Um, but uh, I was, I'm very lucky to be here today, and uh, I'm so fired. 
I'm so fired up. Are you fired up? Are you fired up? What do we want? Close the field. Thank you, sir. We are all fired up, Charles. Okay, that is a close for today. We hit the streets. We made it known. But the fight doesn't stop here. We know this, right? Yeah! Our, our comrade sister, Asada Shakur, said that it is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We're going to win this, right? Yeah!